Good morning. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together for he is great and greatly to be praised. Have you come expecting this morning? I don't know about you, but I have come. I have come expecting to hear a word from the Lord. I have come expecting a miracle, a breakthrough, new joy, new passion, new love in Christ. So if you've come expecting, join us and let the praise begin. Let's get on one accord. Leave all your problems on the outside to be consumed with a Holy Ghost fire. Open up your mouth and lift the name of Jesus higher. Sing it. Are you ready for your destiny? Are you ready? Are you ready for your miracle? For your miracle. The praise that comes from the enemy are utterly destroyed when the praise. many things you've done for us to praise you and to give you only all the glory so accept our offering of praise Lord we love to praise you
Anybody in here love to praise the Lord? Join us, sing along. Say, Lord, I love to praise you. Lord, I love to praise you. You are my everything. You are my everything. Lord, I love to praise you. Lord, I love to praise you. You're the song I sing. the song I sing. Lord, I love to praise you. Lord, I love to praise you. You mean the world to the world. Lord, I love to praise you. Lord, I love to praise you. Say I love you. 
continually be in Good morning, Sixth Avenue. Good morning. We just want to praise the Lord today. Yes. Just like Reverend Morris said, we're not here to sit here and look at each other. We're here to give the, our Lord and Savior praise. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. I'm just so grateful and thankful for him for everything that he's done for me. He is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. And that's how what we're going to minister to you this morning. I want you to just close your eyes. And I want you to think about all of the goodness that the Lord has done for you and your family. There's no one like you. There's no 
Amen. There is no one like Jesus. He's worthy of our highest praise. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad I'm one of his children. And he's my father. Amen. Let me just encourage you, as you saw in the bulletin, for the next two weeks, starting next Sunday, uh, we're going to be passing out the stewardship commitment packets. And I want to encourage you to go by there and, and pick up one. Every adult member in the household, please go by. The women on mission are going to help us with this effort. And they'll be in the fellowship hall and other strategic areas around the church. Please go by. Many of you work diligently to send us those ministry description forms and the volunteer requirements for the members who will help your area out. So it has come to fruition now, and we're working on this campaign. So if you do that, that'll be so great, and we'll be so blessed by your support. I want to encourage you to continue to fill out the attendance worship pad. Amen. It's, it's proven to be a tremendous blessing for our congregation, and as we communicate with the members, we'll find out so much that's going on in their lives, and we can't know that uh, what's going on with you without a process, and this is a process that we're using. So if you're coming here for the very first time, please fill in all of the information. If this is your very first time, fill in all of the information. But if you've been here previously and you've filled it out before, you don't have to do that. 
Thank you so much for doing that. I'm not going to trouble you long, but there is a word from the Lord out of the Old Testament. Uh, I consider this one of the classic scriptures, Ezekiel chapter 37. You all know anything about dry bones? Amen. So <laughs> we're going to share just a little while from this thing. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 9. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 9. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there was very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O oh, breathe, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, Thanks be to God. I want to talk just for a little while from the theme, I need a word from the Lord. Time is filled with swift transition. Mm -hmm. Not a birth and moon can stand. Something turn up and hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on, help me say that. Oh, why don't you hold to His hand? Mm -hmm. God's unchanging hand. You just hold, my Lord. God's unchanging hand, you 
we come now to another preaching moment. We come, oh God, at a time where we need you. We need your word and we need your grace. We need your healing power. Speak now, Father. Not my will, but thine will be done. Somebody has come seeking you. They come. This is their last hope. They come needing to see you. They've come needing to hear from you. And I pray right now, oh God, that you'll just bless them in a mighty way. Don't let us be distracted this morning about where we're going to go when church is over, what we got to eat this evening. Don't let us be concerned about what's not right in our lives, but let us be thankful that we made it to the house one more time. We rebuke the enemy right now because he wants us to be distracted. He didn't want us to focus on your word. But I pray, oh God, that you allow us to hear what you have for us and we'll be able to receive it. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 I need a word from the Lord. Let me just tell you up front that this sermon is about faith in God and God's word. On this journey, you're going to have to have faith and you're going to need God's word. So if you don't remember anything else that I say this morning, remember that you're going to need faith in God's word. Ezekiel said that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now, whenever God's hand gets upon you, something is about to happen. I don't know if you've ever experienced that or not, but, but I've experienced that when I initially came into the ministry, the hand of God was upon me. You see, I, I didn't want to go preach because I was still in college and, and Brother Foster, I had joined a fraternity and I wanted to do what the fraternity brothers were doing, young college brothers did. And, and oftentimes, it didn't have anything to do with the ministry. And uh, from, I would come out of noonday Bible study because, you know, my mother, she had us in church. It was, it was 11 of us, and, and you had to go to church or, or you weren't going to, it was just over for you. So, <laughs> so you had to go. And, and, and so I went to noonday Bible study while I was in college, and, and I recall coming out of noonday Bible study, walking across the campus, and I was trying to hide my Bible up under my books and coat because I wasn't ready to do what God wanted me to do, and that was preaching. I didn't want nobody else to see me with my Bible on campus. And so, but God's hand was stronger than my flesh. When God's hand is upon you, you just got to do what he wants you to do. And so the hand of God got upon Ezekiel. Uh, and, and, and what amazed me about what God did when he put his hand upon Ezekiel was that he led him into this valley of dry bones. Led him into a place where there were dead folks. Uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but it's something about walking in a cemetery. It, it's a giving you a, a different type of feeling. Now, I ain't necessarily scared of dead folks, but it's a different kind of feeling. It's not like walking in the, in, in the Galleria parking lot. It's not like walking in the parking lot at, at the high school or even coming to the church parking lot. It's a different type of feeling. My nephew, my cousin, who is a pastor also in South Georgia, uh, when we were in college, we were going to get a tent from a funeral home, and, and the funeral director left him at the front desk while we went to retrieve the, the tent. And we went out the back door, and, and the tent was not at the funeral home, but it was at a local high school. We had to drive and go get the tent. And while we were gone, my, my cousin heard all kind of noises coming from the back of the funeral home. And, you know, he didn't know we were gone. <laughs> and so when we came back, uh, we told him that we had to go to the high school to get the tent. He said, man, had I known you all were not here, I would have taken off a long time ago. It's just something different 
about being around the dead. But Ezekiel was caused to walk around these dry bones. Nothing moving down in this valley but Ezekiel. Nothing walking by but Ezekiel. The bones were, were dead. They were dry. And the Bible says that they were very dry. They've been dead for a mighty long time. Ezekiel never would have gone in the valley had it not been for the hands of the Lord. And don't you know something? Uh, in our communities, in our lives, there are a lot of dry bones. There's a lot of dead situations. And, and sometimes we just don't want to deal with the, the dead situations. Sometimes we don't want to deal with the dry bones in our lives. And, and if the Lord doesn't cause us to address the dryness in our lives, the dry bones in our lives, we won't deal with it. Hmm? So it's a, some dead folks still breathing. Hmm? Not here at 6th Avenue, but in other folks' churches. <laughs> and I, 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 from the Front door to the back door. <laughs> All of us are, are, are included in that from time to time. And none of us are exempt. And the prophets and the leaders in our communities and in our homes and in our churches, we have grown comfortable with the dry bones. We have grown accustomed to dead situations. And it's easier for us not to deal with the dryness that's going on in our communities. We don't want to deal with what's going on in Virginia. We don't want to deal with what's going on in, in the White House. We don't want to deal with a lot of stuff that's going on in our lives. But God wants so much more for his people. He wants so much more for his cities. He wants so much more for our lives. God sent Ezekiel down into this valley of dry bone because God saw the potential. Good God Almighty. <laughs> you don't hear me. He saw the potential even in dead situations. Is anything too hard for God? <laughs> Your situation is not too dry for God to deal with. The White House is not too dead for God to deal with. God can see the potential in things that are too difficult for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, go on down in the valley because I got a work for you to do. You may be experiencing some dry bones situations in your life, in your home, on your job, at your church, even within yourself. Hello, somebody. Huh? Amen. Uh, just because it's dry, it doesn't mean that it can't get better. There are situations all around the man of God, all around the prophet Ezekiel. But God had to make him see the potential for change. Amen. We know our money Huh? It's, not, it's not right sometimes. And, and in some cases, we know why our money is not right. Huh? Uh, we know why it's dead. You ain't got to say nothing, but, to, you know, but, 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 but we know. And we walk around and we say, uh, I can't make ends meet. And I heard somebody say, I'll just be happy if my ends waved at each other every now and then. But, but we know the issues. Uh, and it's not that we need more money because what? The more money we make, the more money we spend. And so the issue is not necessarily more money. And I see the Lord gave me something then too, you know. Even now we spend more money on education. But back in the day, what? We got more now than we had then and we did more with it, didn't we? 
I'm going to leave that alone too because that's a whole other can of worms. But the issue I, I want to say to us this morning is that we are not necessarily applying God's word faithfully as we walk this journey. And when we don't faithfully apply God's word to our lives, then at some point it's going to start impacting our faith. And when, we, when our faith is impacted, then we start giving up on God and his way and we try to do it our way. And we just make a bigger mess of things. And if we look back over our journey and we trace it and pinpoint where we started getting messed up at, we can see it was just about that time when we start walking outside of the will of God. So our problem is not so much a financial need as it is a spiritual need. Watch this. I'm going to press my point just a little further. In the book of Acts, there is the first Christian miracle where there was a lame man who was brought outside of the gate called Beautiful. Right behind the gate was the temple. The church was right behind the gate. All of that worshiping going on up in the temple, all of that praying going on up in the church. But every night, the lame man went home with only a few pennies in his cup. And every day, somebody had to bring him back and set him in front of the gate called Beautiful. One day, Peter and John, the Bible says, came along. And they said, the man asked them, asked them for some alms. He asked for some money from them. And you know what they said? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, rise up and walk. Amen. He needed a word, not money. He needed a word from God. And that's what we're talking about this morning. I need a word from the Lord. I don't know about you, but every day I wake up, I got to have a word to get me going on this journey. Well, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel missed the point of God's question to him. God wasn't asking Ezekiel if these bones could live because God didn't know. God knows everything. He's omniscient like that. There is nothing that he doesn't already know. He was given Ezekiel an opportunity to express his faith. He, Ezekiel was pretty much insulting the intelligence of God by asking him, by saying, Lord, you know. That's like me, ask, that's like me telling my daughter, uh, Shanice, I, I like those shoes you got on. You know what her response to me would be? I, I know you do. <laughs> and so God knows all of these things already. And so it, we need to exercise our faith. What does it mean to exercise our faith in God when we're dealing with dry situations? Does it mean that we should use our faith like some magic stick, hoping that if we pray asking God uh, to turn our situations around, that it's going to happen right then and right there on our timetable? I got news for you. Rarely does it happen like that. Things don't necessarily change automatically and instantly like that. Faith is about trusting that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, God can fix it and God will fix it if we don't give up. Our problem, the problem with the magic stick faith mentality is that after one prays and nothing really changes, we quit and we do it on our own. But if we are faithful, we can't give up on believing that God can fix it. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and 1, in the King James Version, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In the New Revised Standard Version, it tells us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Uh, assurance. It's knowing that you know that God will deliver on the promise. I mean, he brought you through too much for you to doubt him now. Amen. He opened too many doors for you, for you to, to doubt his commitment to you. Can't nobody tell you that God is not able or that God will not come through for you. I'm talking about the assurance now. Amen. Uh, whatever your needs are, 
you know that God can provide it. Amen. If somebody ought to testify, won't he do it? Won't he come through for you? Amen. You got to know what type of God you serve. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, them, but it's also, according to this NRSV version, the conviction of unseen things. Conviction of unseen things. Physically, your situation hadn't turned around yet. Physically, you haven't been released from the hell that you're in. Physically, the devil is still messing with you, and he has his foot on your neck. Physically, your health is still in poor condition. Physically, you are still in a deep, dark mental state right now. Physically, the shaft has just pulled up to your door with an eviction notice. Physically, Alabama power just turned your lights off. Amen. Physically, a hurricane has just destroyed your home and everything you work for, but you have conviction. You have conviction. What is conviction? It is the ability to see with your mind's eye. The ability to see with your mind. My deliverance hasn't come yet, but I can see my deliverance. I don't have a house right now, but, but I, I can see the foundation being poured. I can see the frame being erected. I can see the contractor handing the keys to me, to my house. Dr. King talked about that he, uh, when they had to go to the back of the bus, when they had to go eat at the back of the doors, uh, when, when they had to be second class and, and all of these things and attend separate schools and drink out of separate water fountains. He said, I've been to the mountaintop and I looked over yonder's hills. And I've seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I've seen a, a better and a brighter day. He hadn't been on no mountaintop, but he, in his mind, with his mind's eye, he had conviction that it wouldn't be like this always. And you got to know that too. It's not going to be like this always. God can fix it for you. But you got to have faith. You got you to have conviction. Uh, I'm reminded of this old story about a man with a old hound dog, and this old hound dog wouldn't chase a hot biscuit. But one day, uh, a rabbit hopped by, and, and the old hound dog jumped up and started chasing the rabbit. And, and around and around the house they went and through the bushes, and before long, he had every dog in the neighborhood chasing that rabbit. And they just went up and down the valleys, and just kept on chasing this rabbit. And eventually, the other dog started dropping out of the race, out of the chase. And so, it, after a while, it was just that old hound dog still chasing that rabbit. And the owners of the other dogs started asking the man, so why did our dogs drop out of the race? And the owner said, well, you're asking the wrong question. You ought to be asking, why did my dog continue to chase the rabbit? And that's because my dog was the only dog that actually saw the rabbit. The other dogs just heard that there was a chase on. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to say to you is that you got to see for yourself. God turning things around for you. You got to see, see for yourself that God's making a way for you. Amen. You got to be able to know. You got to have faith, assurance, and you got to have conviction. Do you have any situations that are causing you to lose sleep at night? Are you experiencing any relationship issues in your life? Is it dry? Is it dead? Hmm? The first thing is that one must have faith to start with. For the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But with faith, all things are possible. Through Christ, who strengthens me, I can do all things. Nothing is too hard for God. I heard Jesus say, Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. This whole thing uh, is about believing. God is looking for some faithful soldiers. He's looking for some folks who know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Looking for some people that know he's the king of kings 
and he is the Lord of Lords. Don't lose your hope for a brighter tomorrow. That's one of the biggest problems that we have in our society is folks have lost hope. But God didn't want you to lose your hope today. Amen. Trouble didn't last always. Weeping only endures for a night. But I got news for you. In the morning, if you hold out, your joy will come back to you. Wait a minute. When Ezekiel failed the faith question, God told him to prophesy. And I'm almost done to the bones. Say prophesy to the bones. In other words, Ezekiel, put some word of God on them dry bones. Tell your people Israel what thus says the Lord God Almighty. Tell them that their Babylonian captivity is not how this story is going to end. Aren't you glad about that today? It doesn't matter how you start on this journey. Just know that it doesn't have to end that way. Tell them that their captivity is not how this thing is going to end. Amen. Uh, when the word is spoken, faith is developed. Romans 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I heard Timothy say, all scripture is inspired by God. Every word that we have in the Bible is given by inspiration of God, and it is good for teaching on doctrine. It's good for rebuking. It's good for correction. It's good for guidance. It's good for the equipping of all of God's children for every good work. I got news for you. All heaven and all of earth shall pass away. But what's going to last, what's going to remain in the end? It's going to be God's word. Ezekiel went out there to talk to the dry bones. He went out there to prophesy to them. Went out there to tell them what thus said the Lord. And when he did that, the Bible says that there was a rattling in the valley. There was a rumbling in the valley. Uh, a, a foot bone started looking for an ankle bone. An ankle bone started looking for a leg bone. A leg bone started looking for a knee bone. A knee bone started looking for a thigh bone. A thigh bone started looking for a hip bone. A hip bone started looking for a backbone. A backbone started looking for a shoulder bone. A shoulder bone started looking for a neck bone. A neck bone started looking for a head bone. And before you know it, all the bones were together and God had put a body together but it went over yet. God still needed this body to become a living being and so he breathed. Ezekiel just kept on prophesying and breath and sighing and all of that came on these bones. Every dry situation that you have, God's got a word for it. Put a word on your dry relationships. Put a word on your dry churches. Put a word on your dry jobs. Put a word on your dry schools, your dry community. I know that you, you, you've been to some of the best schools in the country. You've been sitting at the feet of some of the greatest minds and thinkers in the world. But I got news for you. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Oh, God's word, it comforts me when I'm lonely. His word heals my body. His word guides me in the midnight hour. His word is like apples of gold and pip pictures of silver. His word can turn around a situation. Somebody in here today needs a word from the Lord. Somebody in Washington, D.C. needs a word from the Lord. Somebody in Virginia needs a word from the Lord today. Somebody in Birmingham, Alabama needs a word from the Lord. Somebody at Sixth Avenue needs a word from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need a word from the Lord. Every day of my life, I need a word from the Lord. God bless you, and may God keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Did you hear a word from the Lord today? I don't know about you today, but if you have never placed your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, today is your day to come saying, Lord Jesus, I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. 
Will you come into my heart and live with me? We need a word from the Lord. What about you today? Do you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart today? Will you trust him as we stand together and sing our song of invitation, this little light of mine? Ursula, will you come and lead our candidates out?